Hello guys and gals, welcome back to another episode of Haunted Gaming. This time we do another Metroid creepypasta called First Crade. This creepypasta begins with the player telling us that he or she has an important essay to write and that he or she was holding it off for too long, and that the due date was closing in. It was getting late and the player wasn't getting far with this essay. His or her head started to hurt and the player decided to take a break and do something else to feel a little better. The player remembered getting a Metroid ROM for his emulator a while back and decided to play the game that he or she wasn't able to play as a kid. The player opened up the ROM with Metroid and began to play the game. The title screen came up like normal and the Metroid logo in the two choices, start and continue. The player checked the folder in the ROM that, uh, was, that the ROM was contained in and noticed that among his or her save files was a text file called PSWD. The player opened up the text file, and inside the file were all sorts of cheat codes, some the player recognized, such as a Justin Bailey code. There seemed to be about 50 cheats in the file. One cheat in particular caught the player's attention. The cheat was called First Crade. The description for the cheat was, when something is broke, fix it. The player went back to the Metroid game and thought about playing with the Justin Bailey cheat, but the player had a save file where he or she beat Ridley first instead of Crade, the opposite of what you're supposed to do, according to the player. So the player decided to just play his or her save instead. The player was two doors away from Kraid and had plenty of abilities, the ice beam and 70 missiles and 4 energy tanks. The player decided to farm his or her, his or her way to full energy, or at least close to it, before eventually heading in to fight Kraid. The room that Kraid was in was different according to the player. You know, it, it looked the same, but there was a pulsating mound growing in the ground. Glimpses of Kraid were flashing at this mound. Random colors then started flashing on the screen. It looked as if the game was seriously glitching. The player then tried to fight the best they could, but no shots and missiles were affecting Kraid. Hell, the shots wouldn't even reach Kraid, and they disappeared right in front of Samus upon being fired. The player moved Samus a little closer and touched what appeared to be a green blob. The screen then started flashing rapidly, and the computer produced a large beep noise. The player stared at the screen, now a barrage of random colors. The player, however, noticed that the Super Nintendo version of Kraid, the giant Kraid, was, was there in the game, NES Metroid. The player was baffled at how the Super Nintendo version of Kraid was even in an 8-bit Nintendo game. The game just suddenly crashed. The player thought he or she could simply reload his or her save, but the player was unable to do that. The player then tried to load up a save state, but couldn't. Trying multiple times in multiple ways, it wouldn't happen. Eventually, the player rebooted the emulator, and finally, the, the save state was loaded up but it, only to be brought back to the password screen. The player knew he or she should be working on homework, but couldn't put the game down, and had to beat Kraid after what had happened, after this Metroid weirdness. The player decided to put the odd cheat in this time, the uh, first Kraid one. You know, after its description said if something was broken, it definitely needed to be fixed, right? And something was definitely broken. The game would start anew, and the player would lose all of their progress. It sucked a little, but the player decided to sit through it and continue. The player put in the first crate code, the screen froze for a bit and then cut to black, and finally the game started and the player was relieved to see that Samus appeared on the screen, at the same location as the player's save file. There were no enemies, but the player believes this was either the effect of the cheat or the game's numerous technical, technical glitches. The player shot a beam to open the door to crate, but as soon as the beam hit the door, the SNES crate showed up. However, this time, it looked as if Kraid was being attacked by something, the SNES Kraid. The player wasn't completely sure since the image was only there for a split second. The player started to think that maybe someone snuck into his or her computer and hacked the game's ROM. Finally, the player entered Kraid's room and the fight began again. This time, the player used a freezing strategy, but eventually decided to drop it and go attack head-on with missiles. Eventually, Kraid was defeated and the player left the room. Walking down a couple more rooms, the player was concerned because there weren't any enemies whatsoever. Now the player would need to climb up a tall block tower, and, if, and according to the player it was annoying as hell to go up. The player reached the tower but noticed that he or she couldn't climb the tower because of missing artifacts, missing uh, blocks. The player grew angry and assumed this may be a practical joke by one of the player's college buddies. The player went to turn off the game but eventually something was approaching from the right. It was a black figure. The screen flashed and the figure turned out to be Kraid. The player was confused and then decided to go fight Kraid, but seemed to do no damage to him. Kraid seemed more advanced, more than anything on an NES game. The player was rolling on the ground leaving a ton of bombs, but eventually Samus' health was critical. The player tried opening a door and escaping, but suddenly Kraid stopped shooting. He simply just stood there, still jumping around but not firing upon Samus. A small text box then appeared with a single word, 
were placed. Then everything disappeared and finally the ROM appeared to be normal. The player shut the game off and began to play Super Metroid. The game was completely normal, all the enemies were normal, and there were no glitches. The player played through the game making fast progress, forgetting about the homework and eventually just flying right through this game. The player went into Kraid's room and waited for Kraid to rise from the ground. The ground began to shake. Out of the ground, the player was shocked to see a headless Kraid, Kraid rising from the ground. A little bit of blood, according to the player, but it wasn't an issue compared to a beheaded Kraid. Kraid was then moving and thrashing violently, as if he were in pain. Colors began changing again and again. Apparently, Kraid turned into a dark color as if he were defeated, and then began crumpling to the ground. The player was too creeped out to continue. Both ROMs doing strange things. What was going on? The player closed the emulator, but when the player closed the when, when the player was about to close all the folders, the text file had changed its name and its file format supposedly to iwas.pdf. The player opened the PDF and was shocked to see what was on it. The PDF showcased the NES crate attacking an SNES crate. It was a gory image of NES crate shooting barbs at the SNES crate. The barbs going straight through SNES crate's neck. Below the picture was a constant repetition of a single phrase. I was the first. Okay, that was first grade. Now for what it is, it was decent. Some of the things we've already seen, but overall it was pretty decent. As far as cliches go, it's not bad and they don't come close to ruining the experience whatsoever. I enjoyed the fight between both versions of Kraid and found it to be kind of creepy when they were fighting each other between the games. I guess NES Kraid hated the change that Super Metroid had brought and wanted to kill the newer Kraid death took his place. Maybe the code was used, maybe when the code was used, old Kraid decided to kill the new Kraid in Super Metroid. What he thought was broken, and so old Kraid sought to fix this problem. Eh, pretty cool concept to me. As far as any problem goes, I didn't see anything too wrong with this creepypasta and really have no complaints with it. There wasn't anything blatantly unrealistic with this creepypasta. I mean, some of the things the game did was kind of unrealistic, un unless specific programs were altered around or created to, to affect and, again, create certain files or patch ROMs unknowingly and emulators that would incorporate more advanced techniques and rendering. But then you gotta remake programs again and... or maybe program a new game, and considering the player told us that he or she used an emulator, this really proves out to be null and void. But a creepypasta isn't supposed to be realistic, and all in all, this is a decent creepypasta. It's got a unique concept, sure some of the stuff we've seen before, but overall, it's pretty decent, and it doesn't overuse gore or anything like that, and I recommend you all to go check it out, linked in the description below. This has been another episode of Haunted Gaming, and if you like what you saw, then like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to submit a creepypasta, you can do so on the Some Ordinary Gamers wiki, the link will be in the description below, or the creepypasta wiki, whatever you feel like. This is me, Mudahar. And I'm out.